Um, hi, my name is Mayan. Um, yeah, you might have seen me on social media. Um, I'm here to talk to you mostly about something that's quite close to my heart, which is accessibility, but I'm going to do it in a really different way because uh, I do a lot of accessibility talk and we're loud and proud about it, um, but it's about access now and today's not at all about access now. Uh, so let's just jump right in. Okay, so this sucks. Uh, <laughs> I, I was like kind of hoping that the business owner was going to be here. Um, this sucks, and this is why I started Access Now uh, because I live with a physical disability. I use a wheelchair, and every time I go somewhere, I need to be able to actually get in. Uh, and this is my reality. Steps are everywhere. And so I was one of those people that Dave talked about, motivated by my own problem. Uh, to just find a solution. Uh, and so if you don't know what Access Now does, basically we are crowdsourcing accessibility information about places. Uh, so if that's something that's interesting to you, I encourage you to check us out, and that's as much as I'm going to plug Access Now. Um, and so I'm skipping this, but that's cool anyway. Um, <laughs> oh, the GIFs don't work? Oh, OK, well, this is a cat, and it's dancing with an iPad. <laughs> uh, so OK, what I thought I was going to do, and which I will do, and I won't narrate the GIFs because that would be ridiculous. But anyway, there are three components to accessibility that in building Access Now, I didn't even think about. And I'm working on a startup about accessibility. So what I thought I would do is list these three components. And these are things that I think can apply to every single person's business. Uh, or even just your life. Uh, so the first one is technology. And we could talk about each of these for like two hours, but we won't. Uh, <laughs> no, we won't. Uh, so <laughs> I got the mic. No, OK. So, <laughs> so it, when it comes to accessible technology, you may or you might not know that you can actually code or build or develop what you are building in an accessible way or a non-accessible way. Uh, so, hmm, what does that mean? Uh, so, for example, if you are a very image-heavy site, if I'm a user who comes to that website and I don't see the images, you can actually code in a way that describes each of those images. So that's just one example, uh, which one that I'll leave you with. But go back to your actual stacks. Go back to actually what you're building, or even if you're in the process of building right now, and consider if, in fact, what you are building is accessible. Because that restaurant that I went to that has a step, that sucks. And that could be your business, and that would really suck. Uh, so don't do it. Uh, that's the first lesson I'm teaching you today. Um, the second one is about accessible jobs. Oh my god. So this is a cat, and it's supposed to be typing on a laptop. Oh my god, that's the GIF. Uh -huh, OK. Uh, like, I can't believe you guys. Uh, so why I'm bringing this up. So there's this tendency that people have, and it's totally normal, which is we gravitate towards things that we know and things that we like and things that are some similar to us. So basically, we build sometimes teams that look like identical pieces of ourselves, uh, which is kind of nice. But actually, I would suggest that you step outside your comfort zone look at the talent pool that's around you, and then go even further and look where it isn't around you. Uh, so rather than surrounding yourself with people that are the same, look for those other perspectives. Because usually what ends up happening is you build better products when other people's perspectives are being heard. You have better services. And actually, it's been proven that you make more money. Uh, so consider that. Is your employment strategy accessible? That's step number two. And then the last one that I wanted to talk to you about is accessible cultures overall. Um, this one actually, I don't know if it's a gift, but I think that the space is supposed to just be like, ooh, space. Uh, <laughs> so OK, so we've built technology that's now accessible. We've built a team that is inclusive uh, and represents many different perspectives. And now that extends to culture. So when I build an event, or if I'm inviting people to something, or I am even just promoting something in pamphlets, is it inclusive? Is the messaging inclusive? Does it support other people's perspectives being brought to the table? Because I think, and especially in this room, I can't preach this enough. I'm not trying to be preachy. But this is a room of innovators and shakers and, and people who change the world, literally. 
And if there's any opportunity to create a world that is more inclusive and more accessible for everyone, these are the people to do it. So I'm up here to say, consider how accessibility affects your business and think about all the benefits that come along when you create something accessible. And that's what I'm leaving you with. Thanks. <laughs> Questions? Hello. So I have a, a good friend and was part of a charity for a number of years. Maybe we're too close to the front. This is still really <laughs> no? Yeah, let's do the mic. You have to talk into it. <laughs> I'm I'm really just prepping for when I'm on stage because I've never used one of these before. So. <laughs> So I've, uh, I was part of a charity for a number of years that um, supported individuals who were visually impaired. And I know that a friend of mine who's legally blind uh, gets a lot of assistance on his technology devices through um, voice speech. Voice speech. And so I'm wondering if there is some sort of universal platforms out there that are developing technologies to make sure that people with a variety of different um, what, and disabilities are getting the type of access that they need. For sure. Um, so yeah, there, there are many assistive devices um, that are kind of add-ons to any platform or any product that would allow people to actually access it more accessibly. Uh, your iPhone, for example, is actually an assistive device in many ways that you might not have even thought about. Uh, and so yes, there, to answer your question, there are many products and services out there. Uh, that act in that kind of assistive device role, but their work, uh, like voiceover recognition, becomes a lot harder if the technologies that we are building are not accessible innately. Uh, so for example, if you have a target uh, and you're trying to describe each of the, the listed items on a menu, imagine for a second if you're not seeing what that menu looks like, if those descriptions aren't actually correct, uh, or don't lead you to the right places, or the targets aren't there, then that's actually not accessible technology. Uh, so even if you have the assistive devices, they don't just plug in unless things are accessibly built. Hello. Hello. Hi. I'm here. OK. Um, we've got a great community here. I'm just thinking about what you're up to. It's really inspiring. Uh, I do like the fact that you kind of point to the fact that cats are actually the master race, and we're just <laughs> servants. Um, but uh, if you're looking for somebody who could help with what you're doing, kind of take it at a pivotal point you're at, say now, what are you looking for in terms of help, assistance? Yeah, uh, so there's two parts. We're looking for funding, uh, like everyone. Uh, but we're also looking for community involvement. Uh, so often there is the, the notion that you have to have a disability to get involved. Uh, I'd like to challenge that. It shouldn't be the girl in the front of the room with a wheelchair talking about accessibility. It should be everyone. Uh, and so if you're interested in getting involved with Access Now, it's literally about pinning places. So go and bust <laughs> all the inaccessible places in your neighborhood uh, and reward the ones that are accessible and actually pin those on our map. And that's accessnow.me. Uh, and we've also got our iPhone app coming up this summer. Last question. I can hear you, but nobody else can. Hello. I think we have a general solution for uh, this kind of problem, which would be an open market for services where uh, accessibility services can be voted up and uh, I'm sure people will jump into serving something accessible. Uh, we can discuss later about this. Thank you. Hello. I think we can still do one more question. That felt more like a statement. Yeah. <laughs> 
there's one. There's, there's three. Right there. This one. Hello? Uh, so what's the most popular accessibility gap among tech companies that you've seen? That's a good question. Um, so looking at actually, I feel like I'm the cat in space now. Um, that's hardcore feedback on my end anyway. So we're good? OK, hi. Uh, so I think what, something that I kind of described is the screen reader friendliness of devices that's often forgotten about. Um, and something as similar, as, as, as simple as alt text. Um, but I think before you even get down into the nuts and bolts, I think the biggest thing that I see is that people just don't, people aren't naturally asking these questions. Um, and that's the bigger issue. There's, there's a lack of curiosity about how do I make things accessible. Uh, and that's just because maybe they just don't even know. Like that restaurant owner who built that step probably didn't do it because he hates me. <laughs> Negotiable. But, <laughs> oh, he hates me now, trust. Um, anyway, <laughs> but because he just didn't know, you know? He just didn't know that by building something inaccessible, it creates a barrier. And so that initial light bulb moment of like, is what I'm doing accessible is actually the number one thing that is creating the barriers because people don't know. Because the second you ask, then there's like every single in piece of information on the internet you can find out. Um, so if you haven't asked that question, I think that's the thing that I, I witnessed the most. Okay, thanks guys.